I would think that there is going to be an admissions committee out there that will overlook that, that will say, you know what, apply to us. We like your story. We like we like the rest of us, right? You need to tell your story in a better way. Um, yes. We we like that part of it. We can overlook those those two science class, uh, two math classes. Uh, apply to us next year, and and we'll we'll give you an interview. Application renovation season two episode three. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, how are you? Doing well. It's a nice, easy day at work today, which is why I have time to talk to you. Yay, that's good. So I'm excited to dive into your application and, and really hopefully help you figure out maybe where you went wrong, where you went right, and how to put your best foot forward next time. Before I dive into your application, I want to hear from you kind of what your thoughts are, where you potentially struggled, uh, and, and how you can maybe improve for next time. So I've spoken to a couple of the physicians that I work with, one of whom is actually connected with my local college of medicine. Okay. Uh, everybody's major concern seems to be my downtrending GPA. Okay. I graduated with two bachelors of arts, and as a result, I did not have the prerequisites necessary for medical school. So I began taking classes and probably got a little carried away. I didn't have any guidance. I didn't even know about pre-med headquarters or anything like that. So I started with calculus, okay. which I subsequently failed. <laughs> it's the only class I have ever failed. I took a step back afterwards and I said, let's try this again, but let's do it right this time. I took pre-calc to like refresh my memory. Okay. And then I passed, but with a D. <laughs> okay. So math, definitely not your strong suit. No. Never <laughs> That's okay. Guess what? You don't need to be a stellar at math to be a, an amazing physician. Yeah, I've kind of figured that part <laughs> out. However, it makes my, even though on all of the rest of my pre prerequisites, I have A's and B's, that one fail dropped my GPA significantly. Yep. yep. So currently I'm actually retaking calculus for a third time, but in person instead of online, which I did the first two oh. times. And I'm doing significantly better. Okay. And it looks like I'll get an A in the class. We're almost at the midterm and I still have an A. Okay. Good. Uh, unfortunately won't help your GPA tremendously, but at least it says, hey, I've I kicked calculus's butt. I'm ready to move <laughs> on. Um, okay. Did you get any interviews going through the cycle? No, absolutely okay. none. All right. Um, all right. Well, let's go ahead and dive into the application. I'll kind of go through the whole thing, give you my thoughts on the whole thing. And at the end, we'll, we'll talk about what I just talked about and, uh, and get any uh, questions that you have. Okay. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. So let's dive in. So first thing I notice is an early application, which is great, right? You applied mid-June. I think the cycle opened up uh, for this year was like May 31st, I think. Yeah. Uh, so you applied two weeks later. That's awesome. That's early. Do you listen to your podcast that says, That's good. hurry up. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> um, and so students can still see, even though you applied early, you Did applied with every... Interview. Yeah, yeah. You applied with everyone else. Uh, and the processing time was long. So it took almost a month and a half to get your application processed and verified. So which is why we yeah. tell students to apply early. I went to schools abroad and I and I was also a transfer student and I changed majors and th yeah. there were a lot of schools that required transcripts and it took some time. Okay, good. All right. Well, let's, let's keep going through. Um, so institutional action. So there's already kind of a red flag that schools can easily filter out and say, we just don't want to deal with any students with the institutional actions. Um, you put yes. Uh, obviously, getting an F in a class is going to trigger something for students. The explanation for your institutional action leaves me wanting more, right? You say, due to oh, a grade I of F in calculus, I was placed on academic probation. I want to understand why you got an F in calculus, right? What is that reflection on why you struggled, why you failed? Um, all right. And then going through your... Uh, kind of transcript as AMCAS lays it out here. Decent grades for your classes as we go through. You had 
osteology. I don't even know what that is. Uh, I got a study see. of human skeletal structure. The school oh, here osteo, yeah. it has a human bone lab from people who've donated nice. their bodies. Nice. I got, I got Mr. Bones. I knew that C plus in osteology was going to come up. I got Mr. Bones with me here. So, hey, hey, how you doing? <laughs> how you doing? Um, all right. Uh, so looking through, uh, and then we get to your post back, your F, um, and then Bs and As, and that D and that repeat. So that's definitely the struggle. And so when I look at your GPA, as I'm looking kind of at your uh, grid here, a 293 post back undergrad, right? Uh, yeah. A 3... 06 cumulative undergrad science GPA, uh, and then a 30 graduate GPA. So from a science standpoint, I just don't see the strength of you're going to be able to handle medical school, right? So that's always the big question: is 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 the student not not a 4.0 student, not a 528 MCAT score? Is the student going to be strong enough to to succeed in medical school. And so that's definitely, as, as you mentioned at the beginning, kind of the that question mark with that downward trend uh, because of that D and F is going to to hurt you a little bit. Um, uh, and and taking those classes uh, as post back, obviously lots of, of hours there, 44 hours, so that's good. Just that, that DNF just really, really stuck. I know. It was only one <laughs> class and it ruined everything. <laughs> well, it was two classes. That D didn't help either. Um, it's technically but <laughs> te Technically. Well, not for medical school. So just, just to not clarify for, for, uh, for students watching this, um, passing for the institution, most medical schools want to see a grade of C or higher, not a C minus, a C or higher for those prereqs to consider that a passing grade. So it's a good, good thing to point out here. Um, obviously your cumulative undergrad 355 is a decent GPA. Um, it's, that, it's that science that really hurts you. Yes, it's that there's not a lot of scientific courses in that. Yeah. I was in yeah. <laughs> if yeah. only schools could go, hey, I'm just gonna take that calculus out. Um, did you apply to DO schools? No. Okay. I'm sure maybe you understand, right? For a DO application, those that calculus wouldn't have counted towards your science GPA, and your science GPA would be much, much higher. So potentially something to think about as students are going through this process of, like, I just stink at science, right? Right now you're doing well in person, amazing. But for those students who just really stink at, not at science, at, at math, they're like, I'm just not a math person. It's just something doesn't jive with me. That DO application may be friendlier to you because math isn't considered a science course on the DO application. Your MCAT score is great, right? You've proven, right, from an MCAT perspective, 509, that doesn't give me any concerns. I'm actually planning on retaking it. I wouldn't. My bio score was like 124 or something like that. Yep. I wouldn't. And it's a good, really? it's a good score. It, a, a 515 isn't going to help your GPA. Your GPA is, is low enough that's, and concerning enough that's like, uh, right, a higher MCAT score. It may open a few more doors for you, but it's not, in my mind, not going to make a difference between acceptance and not. Okay. 509, really solid score. Um, and then we get into your experiences. And one of the biggest question marks that I have that I wrote on this is shadowing. It doesn't yeah. look like you have any shadowing on your application. So my issue, which I actually looked at, I started looking at my extracurriculars. I kind of lumped my shadowing in with my scribing, which is what I'm fixing on my application this time. Okay. Uh, because a lot of my shadowing came as a result of my scribing, but it wasn't, I wasn't actively scribing during the shadowing. Okay, so you you leveraged the exposure and the connections from scribing to then shadow kind of off duty. Yeah. Okay, and 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 I'm glad you talked about scribing because you do have that on here. Let me get to the it. The orthopedic scribe. The orthopedic scribe. Yep, you were there for a year. And you then I actually transferred to cardiology. Uh, okay, let me... Which I feel like I may not have made clear on my application because it looks like I jumped for a year, but I was still scribing. Yeah, so I don't even see the cardiology one. Because I'm now, I'm still in cardiology, but I'm a clinical research coordinator now. 
Okay. Yeah. I got promoted. Okay. So, however it looks, right? So if I look at uh, your scribe, you did it for a year. Um, you stopped it uh, mm -hmm. six months or so before your application. It's like, okay, are you still getting clinical experience? Yes, mm -hmm. no, maybe so. That's fine. If you're still getting clinical experience, great. Uh, mm -hmm. where, where a lot of students go wrong is they go, okay, I checked the box. I got oh. enough hours. I don't need any more clinical experience. Now, I'm not saying you have to keep scribing. I'm just saying find some more clinical experience. I do actually still scribe as part of my current role. Great. Okay. Awesome. Um, all right. And I, and I brought up the scribing kind of first. I skipped over some other points that I wanted to make because a lot of schools will look at scribing if you don't have shadowing, either a lot of shadowing or any shadowing, they'll look at scribing and go, she's fine with shadowing, right? Because scribing is basically very, 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 very active shadowing. You're you're yeah. listening, you're doing stuff. And, and so schools understand that and they'll, they'll be okay with that. All right, so going back to the rest of your application here, you have your publication journal review stuff, uh, which is great, lots of hours. Um, well, I have a question about that one. Yeah, okay, let, let's hold the questions to the end so okay. that we can get through a bunch of these and then we'll okay. make note of that. Um, the medical clinical, this next experience that pops up here, this clinical research coordinator, that's the where you said you're getting some experience now. Mm -hmm. So as you wrote your description, the description doesn't tell me at all that this is a clinical experience. Mm -hmm. And so I look at that experience and I go, that's not clinical, why did she label it as clinical? You, you say here that you were reading a canine study, that you created a study poster, that you write manuscripts, edit abstracts, recruit for research studies, right? None of mm -hmm. that is clinical experience. Obviously it's all clinically related because it's healthcare related, mm -hmm. but in, in the definition of what is clinical experience where you're interacting with patients, what you have described is not clinical experience. Okay. So if you are getting lots of clinical experience, make sure you're focusing on that in the description so that someone oh. reviewing this can go, okay, I understand what you're doing. And that's the difference between having something that's a little bit more kind of generic clinical research coordinator that mm -hmm. I really don't know what that is maybe in the in the big picture. It's some places it's tons of clinical experience. Some places it's a lot of reading abstracts, editing abstracts, et cetera, which mm -hmm. isn't clinical. It's maybe more research related mm -hmm. um, versus something like if you're an EMT, being an EMT is being an EMT, right? It's there's 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 really not a lot of question marks around that. Mm -hmm. So just make sure you're focusing on the right stuff. Okay. Um, same thing with the next one. And so I see two, two experiences back to back where I'm questioning, this isn't really clinical experience. And then I'm questioning your whole application. Like, uh, is this whole application just a big farce? And that's not something, you know, you don't, you don't want your, your, your reviewer to go, I don't know if I trust this application, right? No, and so I don't like that. <laughs> I know, I know. That's why we're talking about it, right? And so listen, right? So you you have community service volunteer, medical clinical as the as the subject. It's mm -hmm. um, a month, forty eight hours. So it's not super impactful, right? It's only forty eight hours. But what, as you dive into the description, you're saying is you are a camp counselor. And that's mm -hmm. not clinical experience. Sure, it's at a medical school. It's, you're around exactly. clinical things, right? And the the e example I always give is a student. Uh, it's been a couple years now. A student I, I was reviewing his application. Very, very, very minimal clinical experience. And what he did have on there, he listed as clinical experience. He literally was the janitor, but because it was at a hospital, he labeled it as clinical experience. Right, and so you're doing a very similar thing here. Because it's around a hospital, medical school, around doctors, et cetera, medical students, you're like, oh yeah, this is clinical experience. Okay. Right, so you gotta be careful with that. Exactly, okay. Um, and then we get into the scribe, which is great, uh, obviously great clinical experience. Uh, and remember that the goal of, of 
the application is really telling your story, why you wanna be a doctor, show how it was impactful for you. And so one of the things I marked on here was what you focused on is I earned a reputation for being able to document even the most complicated cases, right? Just very braggadocious, right? A little humble brag. You don't need to sell yourself and, and get into that, uh, okay. that part of the story. Um, and then another one, which I've, I've talked about a few times now here in season two is the term providers, the term practitioners use physicians, use the word physicians. There's, there's a okay. big uproar in, in the medical community right now around those <laughs> terms. Um, what, what got a little chuckle out of me. And, and when I showed my wife, Allison last night, <laughs> I was like, listen to this. The two patients. I'm glad you got into a story, which is awesome. I love stories. You didn't like Sonny and Cher. <laughs> Sonny and Cher, right? It's just a little bit too cute. Name them okay. John and Sally, right? Sonny and Cher. It's going to get a chuckle. It may be a little bit memorable, but it's just a little bit too silly. Okay. Um, but it's, it's, it's funny. Um, all right. But I, I, I love that you got into the story there which is great. And then as, as we continue to go through, lots of good experiences, non-medical experiences, hobbies, which is great to include. Um, oh, one of the things that I had, had marked here, um, your clinical research position now, you put the end date as May of 2019. You submitted your application June of 2019. And so again, that looks to me like you stopped it and now you're really not doing anything. So remember on the AMCAS application, the okay. I, I recommend to everyone, it's like required reading, read the instruction manual. The instruction manual specifically says you can put out current activities to the anticipated start date of medical school. Okay. Okay. So that shows like it shows the medical schools, okay, this is something that you're going to be doing throughout the cycle until you start medical school. Um, student association president, uh, obviously this internship in China. So lots of great experiences that show me that you have a, a good breadth of uh, experiences and, and what you're doing. So lots of good stuff there. All right, and then we get to your personal statement. You have this initial story here about the pain that you had, uh, the, the experience that you had as a patient. Mm -hmm. And I'm left at the end with, it's a little bit negative, right? I had to turn to Dr. Google, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, these doctors don't know what the heck they're doing. I had to do it myself. I'm the only one. I'm going to be smarter oh. than all the rest of them. Oh, that's not what I meant at all. <laughs> And this is this is why I read stuff. Um, so a little bit of negativity there potentially. Again, I like the story. I, I like focusing on stories, which is great. Um, I did read your book. Good, 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 good. Um, at the end, you you say a few hours later, uh, later my gallbladder was out and my pain was gone. They had resolved uh, a year of pain and a major source of stress in my life. Great the next words out of your mouth, the next words on this piece of paper should be a reflection of why did this either, was this your seed? Was this kind of your turning point to go, I need to be a doctor or I need to be involved in healthcare some, in some way? Or was this watering the seed of a desire that you already had? You say, I decided I wanted to change people's lives in the same way. And so you start to go down that path, which is good. I have this highlighted yellow. You have a little bit of reflection in there as to why it is, uh, it's an important part of your journey. I would say that it's just too long of a story. Um, too I, much story, I, not enough reflection. <laughs> too much story, not enough reflection. I, I, the reflection I think is, is good. It's just a lot of story that we, we could have shortened up and, and used different stories to help bolster your, your overall argument of, of why you want to be a doctor. Okay. All right. Um, mm -hmm. So good job there. The, uh, the next paragraph you're talking about working as a scribe and the kind of sales pitch here is, hey, I'm okay being around all of this gross stuff. I didn't get sick or overwhelmed or emotional. Therefore, I should be a doctor. Right? Okay. It's a very common story that students try to tell of, of I, didn't, I didn't pass out the first time I was in the OR, so therefore <laughs> I want to be a surgeon, right? 
Uh, it's just not a, a, a strong reason for why okay. you want to be a doctor. So I get to the end of the question. Uh, the the story is that you understood uh, the the language that they were speaking, and that was it, right? That was the end of the story. Again, the question is, well, why did this, again, strengthen your desire to be a physician, right? Just because you understood okay. the patients and the physician doesn't mean you should be a physician, right? Mm -hmm. um, the next paragraph uh, is a very common example of talking about shadowing uh, in a personal statement and, and sometimes scribing too in, in some way because mm -hmm. scribing is just really shadowing on steroids um, where you focus so much on the physician. Right, you say his bedside manner, his dedication to educating patients inspires me. He embodies the tenet of do no harm. He takes the most complex, most hopeless cases, providing hope to many. He strives to improve his practice and treatment uh, through research and training. Right? This is an essay about you and why you want to be a doctor, not about how awesome this doctor is All right? or how you thought he was awesome. And so again, uh, the, the takeaway, right, you, you tried to do some reflection. The, the more clinical experience I accumulated, the harder it became to deny the call to medicine. Why, right? That's a, a nice statement, but the question is why? Why did it become harder? Why was it so impactful for you? Okay, not that it was, but why was it? Okay, uh, and then I, I have here, it looks like the rest, uh, a lot of the rest of the examples are, are just shadowing examples, which make them weaker stories to talk about to really prove why you wanna be a physician. Um, I do have a, a good takeaway that you have here. I want to be that doctor providing patients with the relief and answers they need to move on with their lives. That's the why. That's the kind of stuff that I'm looking for, right? That is, is showing the reflection on why you want to do this. Okay? Okay. Um, so not the best personal statement, which is okay. Um, My initial like word vomit one where I just wrote out everything was like six pages. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then we get into school list, um, decent school list. I think you, you did a good job with a mix of private schools with Einstein, Baylor, Rosalind Franklin, Duke, Keck, super competitive schools, right? And, yeah, and with that was your, a little unintentional. I broadened my uh, yeah, school good. list a little more now. Yeah, with your MCAT I was mostly and GPA. concerned would they accept my credits because the yeah. community college, online college thing while I'm working can... Yep not be accepted by some schools. Yep, true. Um, and so the ones that I have marked here are the the public out-of-state schools, right? So just um, something to be aware of. I think you're, uh, are you an Arizona resident? I am. Yeah, so Arizona here I have marked, but uh, obviously those are in-state for you. So mm -hmm. Ohio State, Colorado, California, Kentucky, unless you have, again, some very specific ties to those states, maybe not the best to apply to them. Um, just from a, a, a residency standpoint. So with that, what questions do you have for me? So kind of just uh, to summarize, uh, obviously that, that the post-bat grades are, are hammering you. Your MCAT score, in my mind, is, is good. Um, the question mark of, is this really clinical? Is it not? Are you trying to pull a fast one on us and, and show that you have lots more clinical experience than you really do? The lack of, of shadowing. Um, so uh, lots of question marks with your, your experiences. It sounds like you have tons of great experiences. It's just maybe we didn't tell the not story so in the proper presenting way. Presenting it to the exactly. admissions committee. Exactly. So what are your thoughts? Uh, I had two questions that have been on my mind. The one is my publications. Okay. Every, every doctor I talk to is like, you need to play that up. I have five first author manuscripts published in medical journals, which okay. for a pre-med is uncommon. Yep. And I put one of them in my activities, but I didn't really go into it. I didn't yep. know if I should make a publication list, if I should just yeah, so something like that, it's very easy to just say, uh, like, a, as the description, like, first author in the following publications, and then as as much as you can fit. Um, uh, students really love to put the full, like, 
the, the proper way to cite a publication. And, and those things are ginormous. Uh, <laughs> but as, as much as possible to say, you can go find these articles here, 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 and here, um, is just a, a quick and dirty way to, to show that you had that experience. The, the research is great. Uh, it shows, obviously, that you're super engaged. First, first author publications really isn't super important. It's, it's much more uh, a access thing and kind of a luck thing that, that you got plugged into the right, obviously, clinical admit- experience and, and, and PI and, ev- and, and other experiences um, that, uh, that great, you got it. It, it shows obviously that you're engaged in research. Awesome. It's not going to win over the GPA side of things to say, hey, this student struggled here, uh, but they have five first first author publications, so let's go ahead and overlook the GPA. And I keep talking about the GPA. The GPA, like if you remove those calculus classes, the GPA is probably decent. I don't know if you've done that math, uh, but but if I were to look here. Usually... Even by my, I haven't done the math, but even by logic, if I took out the two classes, the rest of my grades are fine. Yeah, so you have a mix of Bs and As. So my my just rough guess is probably you're around a three four, um, mm-hmm. which is much better than a, a three, two or nine a two. three. Yeah, uh, and so those those two classes, right? It's really hard to. To, to, to look at that. And, and maybe that's something if, if you can talk to the institution locally where you're at to say, hey, like, look at my transcript. Don't look at my overall GPA, my, my post back GPA. Don't look at that number. Look at the two classes that are dragging down this whole thing. Like, is, is this something we can talk about? And, and mm-hmm. I would really encourage you if you haven't already, because you're, um, you're I think, close to those universities, uh, or at least one of them, just go and have those really frank discussions to be like, like, tell me what you need me to do. I, I, it, it seems like, and, and you can be honest with them, like it seems like just a huge waste of time and money for me to go spend $50,000 on a master's to prove that I'm academically capable when really it's, it's two classes, math classes that, that are doing all of this. Like, can, like, please like work with me. That was what leads up to my other question is the special masters comes up. And of course, yeah. as I applied, I got 90 million emails. Of Join course. our master's program. Join our master's program. And it was suggested by some other physicians, but of course. I, I don't know if it's worth it in my case. I don't know if it is either. I mean, in the in big picture, like if we were, if if your GPA were C's and B's, right? C's are 2.0, B's are 3.0, lots mm-hmm. of B's and lots of C's, uh, and, and your GPA was a 2.93, then I would say, yeah, maybe a special master's program might be helpful. But your GPA is great outside of those two classes, <laughs> right? And so again, do you need to spend $50,000 on a special master's program and a year or two of your time to overcome two classes? And, and I would think that there is going to be an admissions committee out there that will overlook that, that will say, you know what, apply to us. We like your story. We like we like the rest of us, right? You need to tell your story in a better way. Um, yes. We we like that part of it. We can overlook those those two science class, uh, two math classes. Uh, apply to us next year, and and we'll we'll give you an interview. Uh, it's it's going to be very hard for schools to really be that upfront with you, but if mm-hmm. if you touch enough people and and reach out to enough people, go to some conferences, right? The UC Davis conference. Uh, I harp on students going to all the time. Um, the the AMSA convention, which is in March of 2020, as we're recording this, or April of 2020, um, where lots of, of medical schools are going to be at, really get in front of schools and, and show them who you are and what that looks like to to see if you can get some some feedback. Okay. Um, hmm. I'm trying to think if I had anything else. <laughs> I just really appreciate appreciative that you've. Matt yeah, no, I, I appreciate you being willing to come on and kind of expose yourself in some way and, 
and really help so many other students uh, as you are hopefully being helped as well. Uh, again, I, I think- non -prad, And so even yeah. from the beginning, it's just kind of figuring things out as I go. Yep, yep. And that's uh, obviously core to my mission is really uh, helping all the students try to figure out this process. I handed out your podcast info when I was at uh, the U of A pre-med conference. I was nice. like, have you heard this guy? Have you seen his podcast? <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, thank you again for coming on. Hopefully this will help get you started in the right direction to improve your application, tell your story a little bit better, and, and really put your best foot forward next time. Thank you very much, Dr. Gray. Yep, have a good one.